give you a little sun kiss, a little a little uh, uh, Los Angeles. I don't know. I, I'm going to take you um, out. Oops. Uh, to see what a pretty day it is. Man. The little sun and the ocean's right over there. I don't know if you can see. Wow. It, uh, Gorgeous. Uh, there's the mountains, a little snow up there. And the wind's blowing. Okay, so that's your... Uh, that is your kiss of sun for the day in the dead of winter of Indiana. I do love the Walking Dead news. I actually follow it because I find that there is some uh, very interesting perspectives that are always offered on it and uh, uh, good questions to, uh, to broach my castmates on some downtime. How's your coffee today? Is it good? Coffee is fantastic every day. <laughs> I, do, um, I do a French press every morning. So oh. uh, right now I'm kind of into the Starbucks uh, Komodo, Komodo Dragon. Uh -huh. um, although I'm, I, I typically like Sumatra uh, <laughs> beans and I'm grinding myself. And, and uh, I'm from New Orleans, so I, I like coffee strong. Yeah. <laughs> turned down. Um, so French press always serves me really well. The Starbucks has this machine, not every Starbucks. Do they even have Starbucks in Indiana? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's like three. Just kick them out. You're so independent. <laughs> uh, they have a, um, a machine called the Clover, which is kind of a re reverse French press where it sucks the water up through the grounds from the bottom and on a press backwards somehow. And it's my favorite, but only one out of every 20 Starbucks has this <laughs> over uh, machine because it's very expensive to operate. So, um, so I do it myself. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a big coffee fan. Good deal. Good, good, deal. good news for all of us <laughs> out there. Anybody have any coffee suggestions? I'm, I'm, always, uh, I'm always into coffee suggestions and mustache wax. Those are <laughs> yeah, definitely. Those have are you... my heightened topics uh, lately, for sure. <laughs> have you tried Rob Zombie's coffee? I have not, <laughs> and that uh, that is interesting. He because on set he's always a Red Bull guy. Yeah, he, I mean he has coffee uh, in the morning, but it, uh, I don't want to drink it. <laughs> you uh, think it's gonna be too spiced does he up? Actually, does he package a coffee product? He does. It's yeah. on his uh, like website store, like on his www.robzombie.com. Uh, he have actually, you tried it? I actually have not tried it. Is anyone giving it? Uh, I'm going to say it's wimpy. <laughs> I'm going down the line and saying it's wimpy because so much of his other stuff is uh, pretty hardcore. I'm going to say he can he he will fail at coffee. <laughs> He's got to be bad at something, right? <laughs> One thing or another. I, I'm guessing that it's uh, it's mediocre. Tom Waits now. If Tom Waits threw some coffee at us. That I, would I bet that'd be some angry stuff right there. Yeah. <laughs> That would be some coffee fighting back. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, well, good. It's great to be here with um, Walking Dead News today. I'm uh, really excited. I'm excited always to touch base with the audience. Now, I've kind of coined this phrase based on my experience on the show that the fans are more of a participatory cast member. So I call them the fourth wall. Yeah. Three walls typically on, on the stage. And they're the fourth wall cast member because I think they inform the show so much as to what happens and what needs to be done as does the show inform the audience, who I call them. Um, so I don't use the term fans a lot, but I, I recognize fans. I'm a, I'm a fan of several things and or people. Uh, but I, I really feel like because the audience is so active and so uh, well-versed on the show, starting with the graphic novels. When I was a kid, they were called comic book graphic novels. Right. Um, starting with those, all uh, they have a great understanding and conversation about the show. So I I, um, I tune into what they say because I think they, they have something interesting to say. Definitely. If that makes any sense. It's a little bit like the 12th man on the football team. Yeah. <laughs> which is the crowd, mm -hmm. you know, so... Um, I don't know. Uh, that I, 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 that's been my experience. That's what I've come to love about 
about the fan base. Definitely. Well, great. We're definitely very passionate about the show, and you are going to be missed, my friend. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like uh, I feel like it was it was too short of a uh, too short of a lifespan for Axel on 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 the show because of all manner of things, but particularly because we were just getting to know him. Yeah. And clearly, Lou Temple is disappointed to not be part of the show. And I love the show. I love the working environment. I love the people that I work with. But more than anything, I'm disappointed for Axel because I think Axel had a lot more layers to peel off. I think a lot more colors. I think he had a lot more service to the group of survivors and he had more to give. That being said, I'm really proud of what he did offer and what he did bring to the party. So, yes, he'll be missed. I, I feel like he'll be missed from uh, from the audience's perspective. I feel like he'll be missed from the cast members' perspective, the writers. Uh, at the end of the day, there needed to be retribution, and I needed to come out for an eye. The governor couldn't just show up, shoot the place <laughs> up, and yeah. walk, or he would be kind of considered... Uh, a little impotent, a little <laughs> limp dick. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hence um, the quote, so, eye for an eye. <laughs> eye for an eye. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that's, here and now, that's the absolute first thing. Um, that we were starting con to connect with Axel slowly but surely, and then ramping it up, particularly in this episode, where we were connecting with him in a, in a jovial, congenial type of manner. We like this guy a little bit. Oh, gut punch. <laughs> yeah. Production wanted, and I wanted to support that. So mm -hmm. I feel really um, uh, successful, satisfied with how uh, Axel, Axel went out that way. Um, very JFK. Bullet yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, there is... Um, there's no headshot injuries. There's there's not really a um, gray area with that. Right. You know, when we pierce the skull and, and, and hemorrhage the brain, you're pretty fatal. Um, the other great thing about that is there was no possible way to reanimate re into a walker, right. which yeah. uh, I, for one, had no interest in. Mm -hmm. That was uh, something that I was... Um, pleased with uh, when I was approached told <laughs> <laughs> Axel was going to go down um, by Glenn Mazzara uh, uh, it was probably two weeks in advance of it happening we were working on an episode and he he, he just said Lou I'm sorry Axel is going to take a bolt to the head and I'm like whoa whoa <laughs> <laughs> let's slow down. Let's take that down or not. Sit down and um, and you do your appeal dance. We like to call it the appeal dance. And you're um, you're trying to figure it out really quick. Well, we could do this. Though. Don't, don't commit to that. We could do this. That Allen guy. He looks like a troublemaker. We can take him out and get rid of that right away. <laughs> no, Lou. But we're really we're we're grown to attach to you, and, and we do need retribution from the governor and someone has to go down i don't want it to be mm -hmm. one of our survivalists for the two years that we've been at so um 